Hello and welcome to A Daily Purpose Bible Study and Devotional, a podcast by Our Given Purpose. I am Tori, your host. Please take a moment to share this podcast with a friend and let others know they can find A Daily Purpose on all major podcasting platforms and on YouTube. If you have your Bibles, let us open today's session with a portion of the assigned reading. Turn with me to the Gospel according to John, chapter 8. John, chapter 8, verses 12 through 20. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I came from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. John chapter 8 verses 12 through 20. Let's talk about this passage for our Bible study section. In John 8, 12, Jesus declares, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The theme of light is woven throughout the Bible, and Jesus' words in this passage point to a much deeper meaning. From the beginning of creation, light has been a symbol of God's power and presence. In Genesis 1, 3 through 4, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. This act of separating light from darkness can be seen as a metaphor for God separating good from evil in the world. Throughout the Old Testament, we see God's people seeking the light of God's truth and presence. In Psalm 27, 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In Isaiah 9, 2, the prophet speaks of people who walked in darkness, but who would see a great light. This light is Jesus who would come to bring salvation to God's people. In the New Testament, light continues to be a powerful symbol. John's Gospel tells us that Jesus is the Word, who was with God in the beginning, and that through Him all things were made. John also writes that in Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. As followers of Christ, as believers, We are called to walk in the light. Ephesians 5.8 says, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We are called to reflect the light of Christ to the world around us so that others may see the truth and come to know him. Let us remember that in Jesus we have the light of life. As we seek to follow him, may we be filled with his light and truth, shining brightly in a dark and broken world. 
What are some practical steps you, dear friend, can take to ensure that you are consistently walking in the light of Christ? Well, before we read today's devotional, I like to offer you four action steps you can take to ensure you're walking in the light of Jesus and be convicted if you're starting to edge towards that darkness. So number one, seek truth. The light of Jesus exposes what is false and reveals what is true. We can seek truth through reading the Bible prayer, and seeking guidance from wise and faithful mentors. Number two, embrace guidance. Just as light illuminates a path, we can trust that Jesus will guide us as we follow him. We can listen for his voice through prayer and reflection and seek guidance from others who are also walking in the light. Your third action step, cultivate hope. Walking in the light can be challenging at times, but we can cultivate hope by focusing on the promises of God and the assurance of his presence with us. And action step number four, embrace the journey. Walking in the light is not a one-time decision, but a daily choice to follow Jesus. I'll repeat it. Walking in the light is not a one-time decision, but a daily choice to follow Jesus. We will stumble and make mistakes, but we can trust that the light of Jesus will always be there to guide us back to his path. Remember that seeking guidance is a process and may take some time, so be patient and persistent and trust that he will reveal his will to you in his timing. Dear friends, let's turn our attention to hear what contributing writer Diana L.W. Coleman received from John chapter 8. Shining his path, walking in God's light. By contributing writer, Diana L.W. Coleman. Would you deliberately walk in the woods at night without a flashlight? Living in an evil, sin-filled world without having the Holy Bible to guide us, we would stumble, fail, and fail with no hope of restoration. When we study the Bible, We get a clear picture of how we live and have a light for us to stay on the right path. The world offers entanglements and false values to steer us into direct obedience to what God wants for us. The world paints a picture of success and defines it by the accumulation of wealth, prestige, and carnal conditions by any means necessary. Worldly mentality, the one with the gold, rules. But God requires believers to live holy because He is holy. He expects us to show compassion, love, concern, and fairness to everyone. We are no longer children of darkness, and now we should let our light shine for Jesus and tell of His mercy, grace, and how He wants to bless and receive those who will believe into His kingdom. Dear friend, by whom are you governed? Have you checked the batteries of your light? Recharge and take action to walk successfully with our Lord. Please join me in prayer. Jesus, you are the light of the world. In you, there is no darkness. Please help us express the character of who you are and have taught us to be in your word. Teach us to forgive others as you have forgiven us. We pray for this sin-sick earth, and we pray that those who do not believe will come to know you by our lights shining so bright for your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for your light. 
In your name I pray, amen. Shining His Path, Walking in God's Light by Contributing Writer Diana L.W. Coleman One of the greatest joys of studying the Bible is the opportunity to share our insights with others. As we journey through the Bible in a year, you can join us on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app for an uplifting message, Bible reading, motivation, and to create discipline. These devotionals offer the perfect chance to initiate a conversation about God's Word. For more ministry resources, please visit OurGivenPurpose.com. We are deeply grateful to all those who support our ministry and podcast. Your donations allow us to provide this valuable content. We would be honored to have you as part of the Our Given Purpose family. If you feel led to contribute financially and become part of the Our Given Purpose ministry through a one-time or monthly contribution, you will help us to spread God's message and connect with people all over the world. Remember, you have seeds to sprinkle and don't lose sight of the ones falling on you. Where will they grow? By the road and shallow soil in the thickets? Or will they find a home and good soil to flourish and produce a good work? What God has begun in you, he will complete. Have faith and be bold. Thank you for listening to today's devotional by contributing writer Diana L.W. Coleman. Please visit OurGivenPurpose.com to get on our phenomenal mailing list, connect with our contributing writers, partner with Our Given Purpose, and of course to share. Share this podcast with a friend right now.